Professional Fortnite players, the best of the best, I'm talking Fortnite monsters, the ones who stomp everyone in their path, always find a way to play so consistent and it really boggles my mind. How can someone be playing peak Fortnite all the time and rarely slip up? Well, for starters, they practice a lot. And I mean a ton, guys, nonstop scrims and VOD reviews. But if you find yourself already doing all these things and not seeing the progress you want, maybe it's time to touch up your warm-up routine. What's good, everybody? I'm your host, Dan, and today we're going to be going over some of the freshest warm-up routines that will get you ready for a long day of scrims or even tournament play. We're going to go over warm-ups that are both keyboard and mouse and controller friendly, so don't worry, we got all you guys covered. Before the video starts, I got one tiny favor to ask you. We strive very hard to bring you guys the best content out there, so show us your support by liking the video, subscribing, and visiting ProGuys.com for the latest trending articles, VOD reviews, and just about everything else you need to know about competitive Fortnite. We also have on-demand 24-7 coaching, so be sure to check that out by clicking the link in the description. Alrighty folks, let's kick things off with the first thing that you should absolutely be doing the moment you get on for the day, and that's going through your aim training courses. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so important for so many reasons, so please don't skip over this part. It's like leg day at the gym. It's not the funnest thing to do, but skip over it too many times and you're not going to have a good time. Also, who wouldn't want to aim like Zexro and practically never miss a shot? If you're listening and nodding in agreement right now, then pay attention because I'm only going to say it once. Aim training comes in all shapes and sizes and is going to vary depending on if you're a keyboard and mouse or controller. Let's talk about keyboard and mouse first. If you've watched any streamers before, you must already be familiar with Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer, a Steam client program that aims to help your, well, aim. If you're going to set yourself up with Kovacs, then make sure to do it right. You're going to want to head to your settings and adjust the FOV and sensitivity to match Fortnite and give you that super realistic feel. The good thing here is that Kovacs has a sensitivity slider that matches Fortnite sensitivity slider, so no need to do some wacky math to find what you need to input. Once you've got that all set up, it's going to be crucial that you pick out some of the more useful maps to train on. You can practice all day on one map, but if that map isn't actually building some core aim mechanics in any useful way, it'll be a waste of time. In my opinion, when you first get on Kovacs, you should be looking at Ascended Tracking V2 as your mode of choice. Ascended Tracking V2 offers a map full of projectiles that you not only have to swipe your cursor onto in speedy times, but also need to track and hold your targets as they move around. This is a super realistic scenario as your targets in actual Fortnite are going to be jumping all over the place. Do this for the first half of your aim training session, and then we can move over to the second half, Tile Frenzy. Now, Tile Frenzy is a bit more limited in scope, meaning there isn't any tracking involved. But Tile Frenzy gets you really good at flicking onto targets. This is really helpful for close quarter combat situations where your one pump shot turns out to be a life or death situation, and you need to hit. Let me tell you guys, I've missed a lot of those life or death shots, and from experience, I can tell you that it results in death most of the time. So yeah, no more missing! Get in that practice arena! This is where Tile Frenzy comes in, as this map challenges you to touch as many random targets on a wall within 30 seconds. The targets pop up as you destroy the previous ones, so you never really know where you're going to need to flick. It does a really good job of developing good habits and teaching you how far your mouse needs to go when you have to flick onto an opponent in a dire situation. Now if you're on a controller or simply don't want to download Kovacs, then we've got an equally solid solution. Head over to your creative servers and use Jersey's Aim Course. This aim training course takes you through many simulations, between building into shotgun plays, SMG, AR, and even a room dedicated to 180 shotgun flicks. Some people would even argue creative maps are actually more effective than Kovacs since they have real Fortnite game mechanics. Regardless, Kovacs players usually all have good aim, which tells us that either creative aim courses or Kovacs both work. At the end of the course, you can test your sniping abilities in the simulation room. The best part about Jersey's aim course is that it is super accommodating to controller players. The targets actually work with aim assist, so you can have a real simulation of fighting real opponents. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any point. The reason why aim training is so important is because not only does it make your aim more consistent for the real game, but it also builds up some fluidity with your motions. Working on your mouse or controller motions right when you get on will set you up for everything other than aiming, building, editing, general movement, and so much more. That's why aim training is really much more than aim training. It should be renamed everything training. <laughs> But seriously, realizing how crucial aim training really is, and more importantly how it affects much more than just simply combat aim, is really going to help you out. 
After using the suggested aim courses at the start of your next warm up routine, you're going to want to build on it with a solid edit course. This one is a bit more self-explanatory, as anyone on any platform can do an edit course, but the reason edit courses are so crucial is that if you mess an edit up, it ruins your entire play. Most players only expect edits to be done so fast, but if you mess yourself up, it leaves room for your opponent to counteract. Editing late game is highly necessary, and if you end up messing up your edits while tunneling, things could go bad. I also find edit courses to be a little therapeutic, as I can just crank the music up and get my warm-up course going, so I think you guys will like this one. I want you guys to focus more on the structure of the routine over anything else. I can suggest some edit courses for you, but if you already have some courses that you're comfortable with, then you can just continue using them. They all serve the same purpose, so I want to shift my focus to why. Why should you be using edit courses? Well, for starters, editing is a fundamental tool that is only used in Fortnite. You might have been aiming for years in Call of Duty, PUBG, or any other FPS shooter game, but not editing. You and I simply have less muscle memory regarding editing than aiming. This is why it's crucial to spend at least the same amount of time on edit courses than on aim courses, if not even more time for editing. The reason you want to do editing courses after aim courses is because, like I explained earlier, aiming helps with so much more than just combat aim. You need to aim into your building pieces to make the correct edits, so it wouldn't make any sense at all to practice your general aim, e.g. Kovacs or an aim course, after an edit course. Okay, so if you want my top picks for edit courses, two come to mind. If you want a quick course that should be completed in 3-5 to five minutes, hit Mongrel's course for a low to medium difficulty casual editing course. Now, we know there are many other courses you can do, but this one offers a good amount of flexibility. If you're up for a challenge, Raider's edit course is super challenging and takes around 20 to 30 minutes for first timers to complete. Only do this course if you're an expert and feeling really ambitious. So let's get this straight once and for all. First, hit your preferred aim course, run it back a few times until you're feeling really comfortable with yourself, then hop on and go through your preferred edit course, which should be at least as long as the time your aim course took. Once you feel comfortable with your clean edits, it's time to move on to the next piece in your warm up routine, free building. Free building really sounds as simple as it seems. You've put in the grunt work to get to this point, and now it's time to polish your builds as the final touch to your solo warm up. You're going to hop in your own creative server and start cranking out some builds. I will say that these free builds need to be somewhat deliberate. Mix it up. Don't do 90s for 30 minutes and call it a day. Some 90s, sure, but I want you to really try building core mechanics, like different variations of tunnels, for example. Try the fully protected tunnel, the diagonal tunnel, and the matte conservative triangle tunnel, for example. Try to incorporate edits into your builds, as in the real game, you're going to be using both. Regardless of how you shape it, I just want you to purposefully mix in multiple building concepts to really hit home the effectiveness of free building. I'll also mention that you shouldn't be spending way too much time on this section, just a little refresher toward the end of your warm up. Once you're done free building, you're now ready to grab a buddy for your final warm up. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the 1v1 battles between you and your friends. This is going to be your final warm up before actually hopping into whatever match you're going to play, so really try and make this one count. The elusive 1v1 in the context of your warm-up routine should be purposeful over anything else. This is probably going to be the funnest form of warm-up you're going to get, but keep the goal of warming up the mechanics in your mind at all times. During your 1v1 battle, realize your mistakes and try to focus on warming up that part of the equation. Botching your 90s? Focus on fixing them. Scuffing the edit that would have surely banked you a free elimination? Fix it now, before you get into the real game. Trust me, the real game isn't as forgiving. I'm not saying to not enjoy yourself, by all means, have a party, but just make sure that you're also getting the most benefit from warming up by tightening all those loose ends as well. Additionally, try and mix in both build battles and box fights into the mix. You're going to be using both strategies in a real game, so why limit yourself to just one in the warm up? Giving yourself the most exposure in a limited warm up session is going to make you more prepared than you previously were, and will grant you more opportunities to play consistently. So, to quickly recap, the moment you get on, the first thing you should do is turn on the aim training course. Then go ahead and load up an editing course for at least the same amount of time, if not more time than the aim training course. The final solo warm up technique will be a purposeful blend of free building to really lock down the core mechanics. If you can grab a buddy, then test what you just warmed up in a friendly one on one battle. Follow these instructions and you'll be more than ready to jump on the battle bus and rack up those victory royales. Alright guys, that's going to be the video for today. If you enjoyed it, then please leave that like and comment down below your favorite part. We love reading the comments to see your thoughts. Also note, we always take everything you guys say into account and are always working on getting you the best of the best. Don't forget to visit ProGuys.com, the link is provided for you in that description. And also subscribe if you enjoy our content. Anyways, once again, it's Dan. If you want to find me on all social channels, you can find me at, at Daniel Lammerman, and I hope you all have a great day. See you in the next one.